So yes, Namaskar, uh, Namaste everyone, uh, all over the world. Uh, it's a pleasure to join this international webinar on COVID-19 and how to enhance our immune system through Ayurveda. The good part of this is that, that we have more than 600 participants or registrations who are uh, participating or going to participate uh, in this international webinar. And from countries ranging from US uh, to Europe, to Russia, even to Eastern Asia, of course, including India. So we have a very wide range of uh, learned audience. Um, and uh, I believe that uh, everybody will enjoy uh, this webinar and we'll extract uh, some benefits out of it. As we all know, the entire mankind across the globe is suffering from this COVID-19 uh, outbreak. And as of now, uh, there is uh, no uh, medicine or no uh, proper medicine for this uh, uh, virus. Yes, there have been a lot of different types of trial from HCQ to plasma therapy to antiviral drugs and all that. but no one can very specifically uh, control this disease as of now and unfortunately there have been thousands of deaths world over the vaccination is also under trials uh, under progress but practically as we see it will take some time before it comes out in the market and available to all of us so as per opinion of various epidemiologists this virus is not going to go away soon. And WHO said that the worst has yet to come, which is, of course, not a very nice thing to hear. They said that the world has to learn to live with it. There are also talks of uh, herd immunity, which means that let everybody we uh, get immune naturally and get infected and get out of it by a natural immune system. All these questions are definitely uh, disturbing our minds. Uh, and then on top of it, there are national lockdowns in different countries, which has disturbed our businesses, our works, and the whole economy. Primarily our livelihood, livelihood of the poor, specifically in countries like India. So what is the answer? What should we do? So we were thinking of that, and of course, uh, we discussed this uh, with on different platforms with Ayush, and of course, we discussed with uh, Ayur Yog also that can Ayurveda provide a viable alternative? Can we have the virus or the possibility of, can we face this virus or the possibility of this by enhancing our immune system, by preparing our body with healthy lifestyle, healthy food, and of course, following the Ayush guidelines, which means that if, as per WHO and as per a lot of epidemiologists, if this virus is going to be here for a long period of time, then we can't stop the planet. It is practically not possible. So we have to enhance our immunity to face this virus head on. And I think Ayurveda can provide an answer to it. Several Ayurveda protocols for clinical trials and research has also begun in India and also probably in other parts of the world. Like in Gujarat, uh, just two days before we had uh, the information from the Ministry of Health that they clinically trialed 6,000 corona suspects quarantined uh, and isolated with Ayurveda herbs. And after two weeks of the treatments, all were tested negative. So again, it's not that they were all were positive, but they were all suspects quarantined. Some were positive also. So this is again a, a light, some light is coming and there's sign of good news coming vis-a-vis -vis Ayurveda. In Delhi also, in a, in a government hospital, Ayurveda hospital in Delhi, they have admitted 30 plus positive patients under their care and doing Ayurveda treatments for them. Hopefully, we have results there as well. 
Yes, that is why we should think seriously about it. And that is the basic purpose of this whole uh, webinar organized by Ayur Yoga Expo. Ayurveda is a time-tested science since 5,000 years, and it's a, life of, it's a science of life and longevity. And there have been numerous herbs and hundreds of formulations that has been mentioned in these texts, which talks about immunity. Preventive measures to and boosting our immunity, I think in today's time, probably the only way or the best way to fight coronavirus. And as just to conclude, before we start with introduction, immunity in Ayurveda is not only having a sufficient defense response in our body to avoid infections, allergies, or unwanted biological pathogens like viruses and bacteria, but it also means body's natural ability to fight back weaknesses and disease and to heal the body naturally by itself. So this is a very important uh, factor that we need to strengthen our body so that any possibility in case of a virus infection with a virus or COVID-19 in this case, our body is strong enough to even fight back secondary infections if unfortunately it comes to that. Therefore, enhancing the body's natural defense or what we call immune system plays an important role in maintaining optimum health as well as prevention from viral or bacterial infection. So ladies and gentlemen, today in this international webinar organized by Ayur Yoga Expo Greater Noida, Delhi NCR, we are going to speak about it. We have invited an esteemed panel from various parts of the world who has been practicing Ayurveda uh, for several years and will share their experience and views in enhancing immunity in Ayurveda with you all. Before I introduce our panelists, I would like to invite Sri Rakesh Kumarji, chairman and one of the patrons of Ayur Yoga, to say a few words regarding this wonderful initiative and also would like to thank him to help organize this international webinar. He is also the chairman of India Exposition Mart Limited, which is the largest exhibition center in Asia. It's situated in Greater Noida, Delhi, NCR. So I would like to invite Sri Rakesh Kumarji to say a few words uh, to uh, welcome all the participants in this Ayur Yoga uh, in international webinar. Thank you very much. This corona has taught us to greet with folded hands to the entire world also. They have taught that we have to greet with a folded hand. Uh, it is a pleasure to have such eminent members on our panel for the second webinar of the Ayurveda Expo. Today we have with us Dr. Robbie uh, Schlund, German parliamentarian and Ayurveda physician. Uh, we have uh, another eminent uh, personality, Dr. Oleg Sorokin, head National Ayurvedic Medical Association of Russia and leading developer of the Veda Pulse technology. Dr. P. Ram uh, Manohar, eminent scholar and research director, Amrita School of Ayurveda, has also agreed to join the panel today. He has been extensively researching on COVID-19 pandemic also. Uh, and also, uh, our request has been uh, accepted by Dr. Nitin Agarwal uh, to moderate this session. Ms. Dr. Nitin Agarwal is the Managing Director of the Bliss Ayurveda Health Village and, Nas and National Secretary Vishw Ayurveda Parishad. Uh, I also welcome the members of the advisory board of the Ayuro Expo, uh, our eminent audience. There are very senior uh, personalities who are attending the audience. I can see the name of Dr. Stephen Lorenzo, who is also participating here among us, one of the participants over there. Uh, we can see that uh, there are many doctors, Vedyas, CEOs, and founder of the Ayush companies, associations, and educational institutes are here. We can see a commendable response from international stakeholders as well. Uh, Dr. Nitin Agarwal just mentioned about the number. Uh, the idea of Ayurveda Expo was conceived by uh, 
uh, Guruji, Dr. H.R. Nagendra, and executed at India Exhibition Mart Limited last year at the international level to benefit the mankind under his blessings and guidance. Uh, the entire uh, committee that consisted of the entire gamut of the uh, Ayurveda, uh, Ayurved, Yoga, and Naturopathy uh, also attended that program. And today, through this webinar also, again, uh, we are with you. In 2019, the first edition of Ayurveda Expo received among us participation from Ayush industry. In fact, the international footfall was more than uh, 1,000, which is a huge number of the Ayush exhibition sector. Uh, this time in 2020, again, Ayurveda Expo will be held in the month of October. Uh, friends, the clutches of COVID-19, as Dr. Nathin just mentioned, are getting stronger every day. But it is an undeniable fact that government of India has been very bravely fighting against it. Ayurveda, the science of life, knowledge of 5,000 years, has played a vital role to downgrade this pandemic in India. Ancient wisdom of the science has now become evidence and research based under the dynamic leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister, Shri Narendra Modi ji, uh, is also being done. In fact, nowadays we have seen the Ayush ministry is being given due recognition by everybody in the health sector. In the present time, Corona pandemic can be seen as an indication from Almighty God to all of us to learn from Ayurveda, how to live, how to boost our immunity. And that is the uh, main topic of the today's uh, discussion. Uh, friends, with these words, uh, I would now invite uh, Dr. Nitin Agarwal to be sparing your time. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you, uh, Rakesh ji, for uh, the wonderful welcome uh, for our participants. Yes, you are very right that there is a, uh, a, a huge list of participants varying from uh, more than 25 countries from all over the world. And this is a welcome sign that people are interested in listening about uh, how to enhance immunity in Ayurveda. So not to waste uh, uh, too much of our time and give more time to our panelists to speak. Uh, Yes, sir, uh, doctor, uh, uh, I would like to invite first uh, uh, Dr. Oleg Sorokin. He's the president of National Ayurvedic Medical Association of Russia, uh, very actively uh, uh, actively promoting Ayurveda, not only in Russia or CIS countries, but all over the world. He's a medical doctor from Novosibirsk, uh, living there also in Russia and founder of Veda Pulse and Veda Genetics. Uh, a very innovative work he has been doing in the field of Ayurveda. Uh, I hereby invite uh, Dr. Oleg Sorokin to start your presentation, please. Thank you. Дорогие друзья, добрый день. Я буду читать свою презентацию на русском языке, и мне будет помогать мой помощник ассистент Андрей Ковшик. Dear friends, colleagues, um... I welcome you uh, on this great event, and today I'm going to be talking in Russian, and uh, today uh, Andrei Kovshik is going to assist me in translation. Во-первых, я благодарю доктора Нитина Агровала и доктора Ракеш Кумара за предоставленную возможность выступить перед вами в этот непростой для всего мира период. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Nitin and Dr. Uh, Mr. Rakesh for inviting us here. Uh, in this not very easy time for the whole world. По своему образованию я являюсь иммунологом и действительно возглавляю Национальную юридическую медицинскую ассоциацию России. So by my medical education, I'm an, uh, I'm an immunologist and also I am the executive director of the National Ayurvedic Medical Association of Russia. И для специалистов нашей ассоциации мы разработали определенные протоколы, которые позволяют оценивать риски и вероятности развития осложнений при течении коронавирусной инфекции. И этой информацией я сегодня хотел с вами поделиться. And 
specifically for the specialists uh, and members of our, our Ayurvedic Association, we have developed a protocol uh, which can assess the risks of complications after uh, the coronavirus. And today I would like to share those protocols with you. Должен сказать, что на сегодняшний момент в России ситуация с коронавирусной инфекцией не выглядит настолько драматической, как, например, по другим странам западного мира. На сегодняшний момент у нас официально зарегистрировано 70 тысяч заболевших. So I must say that today the situation with coronavirus in Russia is not looking very gruesome. And today, uh, all across Russia, we have only 70,000 uh, infected by coronavirus. И, к сожалению, из жизни ушло всего 615 человек. Это, безусловно, трагедия. Но это не выглядит так драматично, как в других странах составляет всего 0,8% от заразившихся людей. And as of today, um, we regret to say that there were uh, around 6,000 uh 500 deaths across russia but currently there are also oh i'm sorry uh there were only 615 deaths all across russia and this is less than one percent out of the full amount of the infected people Нужно сказать, что Россия сработала на опережение, и вот эти профилактические методы, они, конечно, дали uh, знать о uh, этой ситуации, и мы надеемся на то, что нам удастся все-таки <coughs> остаться на этих небольших цифрах. It is necessary to admit that Russia has applied some preventive measures, very effective ones, and we really hope that we will stay on this level. Но должен сказать, что вот с такими пандемиями человечество, безусловно, встречалось на в ходе своей эволюции. И следы таких встреч у нас в геноме остались в виде почти 10, по некоторым данным, до 30% вирусного генома, который содержится в нашем ДНК. Needless to say that uh, during the evolution process we've been encountering different viruses all of the time and nearly 10% of our genome is considered to be uh, the viral part. Но, конечно, когда возникает эта пандемия, мы не задумываемся о том, что вирусы могут быть движущей силой эволюционного процесса и uh, давать нам возможность приспосабливаться к каким-то новым факторам и достижениям, потому что всегда идет речь о конкретной человеческой смерти, и это всегда трагедия. However, we never consider viruses as a moving force for the evolution of a human being, because it's always, uh, it's always focused on, the, on a human life. И uh, если в самом начале пандемии была информация о том, что преимущественно смертность очень высокая uh, в старшей возрастной группе, то на сегодняшний момент данные показывают о том, что и Пациенты в возрасте 30, 40 и 50 лет, летальность там тоже достаточно высокая. And if previously it was considered that the elderly population is uh, more uh, prone to the complications of coronavirus and to mortality, nowadays it, is, it could be understood that even the population of 30 years old, 40 years old and 50 years old are also at a very high level of risk. Поэтому встает вопрос... А что все-таки может формировать структуру тех осложнений и все-таки вероятность летальных исходов, если это не так четко зависит от возраста? Now here goes the question. Uh, what is the structure of this uh, mortality rate uh, when we're talking that, when we're saying that not only elderly population is affected? И на сегодняшний момент э, эксперты э, со всего мира говорят о том, что одним из ведущих факторов, который может резко увеличивать смертность, являются сопутствующие признаки метаболического синдрома. And today uh, the scientists say that uh, there is one factor uh, which can um, enhance the complications after uh, the coronavirus, and this is the accompanying factor which is called the metabolic syndrome. 
они на первое место ставят все-таки избыточную массу тела и сахарный диабет как самые зловещие сопутствующие факторы. And the main accompanying factors are uh, the excess weight and type 2 diabetes. These are the, the, worst, uh, the worst accompanying factors. Ну и, безусловно, сопутствующие заболевания, в первую очередь сердечно-сосудистые и бронхолегочные. И, как вы понимаете, вот эти признаки могут быть и в молодом возрасте. And these are accompanying pulmonary diseases and cardiovascular diseases. And, of course, they never depend on the age. В свое время, несколько лет назад, в рамках научной работы, которую проводила наша ассоциация, мы разработали методику, которая позволяет оценить степень агрессивности течения метаболического синдрома. And several years ago, in the National Ayurvedic Medical Association of Russia, we have developed a protocol for determining the severity of metabolic stress. Этот протокол включал в том числе обследование пациентов с помощью достаточно известного метода, основанного на принципах вариабельности ритма сердца. And this protocol included uh, the assessment of patients uh, with the very well-known approach, which is called the heart rate variability. Uh, и с помощью достаточно сложной математической модели мы выводили uh, индекс, который позволял показывать uh, буквально в формате светофора зеленый, желтый, красный uh, степень тяжести течения метаболического синдрома. И этот индекс мы назвали метаболический стресс. And by analyzing uh, the by analyzing the heart rate variability of a person using complex mathematical methods, we were assessing the severity of uh, the metabolic uh, syndrome in the body of a patient, uh, like, uh, like a traffic light, the red one, the, the yellow one, and the green one, and uh, we called it the metabolic stress. Соответственно, чтобы было понятно, метаболический стресс — это степень накопления в тканях нашего организма промежуточных продуктов метаболизма, которые давят на биохимические системы и могут приводить к нарушению работы различных органов и систем. So to explain the metabolic stress in a few words, it is the uh, accumulation of preliminary products of uh, uh, like metabolites in the body, uh, which we can also call AMA in Ayurveda. Да, и действительно, понятие метаболического стресса с точки зрения академической науки очень прямо соответствует концепции АМА, которая фактически и является матрицей развития многих болезней. Поэтому, разрабатывая эту концепцию, мы искали научное обоснование этой концепции АМА. So, metabolic stress is very, very much, the term metabolic stress is very close to the term used in Ayurveda for AMA. And by developing this model, we were looking at the developments uh, from Ayurveda as well. Соответственно, индекс, который мы разработали для оценки степени метаболического синдрома, в настоящий момент можно легко аппроксимировать на, как метод оценки потенциальных осложнений, которые могут возникать у человека, который еще не встречался с коронавирусной инфекцией. So the method developed by us can be easily approximated on the state, functional state of a person uh, and the severity of complications which can be, um, uh, which can result uh, in uh, the, um, in contact with the virus even for a person who never encountered the virus before. Так, пациенты, у которых есть сопутствующий метаболический синдром, но которые находятся по этому индексу в зеленой зоне, с большой вероятностью при встрече с коронавирусной инфекцией будут иметь стертую клинику а, и достаточно размазанную симптоматику. So, people with metabolic syndrome, but they uh those who are in the in this green range of this index uh when they encounter the virus they will not be presenting very um uh very very active symptoms 
Люди с метаболическим синдромом, у которых есть признак, попадающий в желтую зону этого индекса, у них, скорее всего, будет классическая картина вирусной респираторной инфекции с высокой температурой, интоксикацией, но самое главное, что вероятность развития осложнений у них будет минимальная. People who get into the yellow range, they will uh, show the presentations of uh, an acute viral infection, like a standard acute viral infection, with high temperature, with uh, the accumulation of toxins. И люди, у которых этот индекс будет ниже 50, именно они в первую очередь, вне зависимости от возраста, пожилой это будет человек или молодой, будут находиться в высоком риске развития осложнений, таких как вирусная бактериальная пневмония с возможной дыхательной недостаточностью. But people who are below the 50% index, like they are in the uh, orange and red zone, these are the people who will uh, develop the worst complications after the coronavirus, which is uh, pneumonia uh, and fibrosis. Соответственно, основываясь на этих данных, мы разработали рекомендации для российских специалистов, работающих, использующих принципы аюрведы, членов нашей ассоциации, и просто холистиков, кто работает в области оздоровительной практики, с целью анализа рисков, чтобы затем профилактически можно было назначить программу, предупреждающую развитие этих рисков. So this index was developed for the specialist working with Ayurveda and any other uh, type of holistic modality of medicine uh, to use it as a preventive measure to estimate the complication severity for the patients. Поэтому среди прочих рекомендаций, которых мы даем для укрепления иммунитета, мы особый акцент делаем на том, чтобы снижать уровень метаболического стресса, который сам по себе является высоким фактором риска. So, among other recommendations that we're giving to the patients, we're also giving recommendations for reducing the metabolic stress, which is the main reason for complications. И одним из терапевтических факторов, который достаточно эффективно воздействует на метаболический стресс, является состояние микробиоты толстого кишечника. Данные последних лет указывают, что она способна фактически приказывать иммунной системе индуцировать синтез интерферонов. And the factors influencing the metabolic stress uh, level is the state of microbiota of our gut. And the, uh, the research shows that the microbiota can uh, force the body to produce interferon. Соответственно, нужно не забывать, что такая же биопленка, которая есть на стенке кишечника, есть и в бронхолегочном дереве. И фактически вирус, прежде чем проникнуть в эпителиальную клетку бронхолегочной системы, он должен сначала пройти в слой бактериальных клеток, которые фактически составляют основу этой биопленки. So, and the same mucus lining, which, is, uh, which lies inside our gut, is located in the bronchopulmonary tree as well. And for the virus to penetrate the bron bronchopulmonary system, uh, it needs to penetrate the endothelial cells and that layer of bacteria are lying there. <coughs> Ну и кроме этого, протокол, который мы рекомендовали нашим специалистам для профилактики и повышения антивирусной резистентности, мы также включили индийский препарат, который мы импортируем из Индии, и он сертифицирован у нас в Российской Федерации, который содержит очень замечательные лекарственные растения. And in order to enhance the immunity, and to uh, reduce the risks of complications, we are using a great product uh, which we import from India, which has uh, greatest herbs available in India. Среди компонентов этого лекарственного препарата, который называется Immunoblis, содержится безусловно бестселлер юридической медицины куркума лонга, которая действует на уровне транскрипционных факторов клетки. And the main ingredient of this Immunoblis product that we're using is, of course, uh, curcumin, which is uh, a perfect 
which gives a pronounced anti-inflammatory and uh, immune modulating effect. Основное назначение и кроме этого бестселлером индийским эндемиком является безусловно индийская эхинацея, которая, как известно, обладает очень мощным иммуномодулирующим эффектом по результатам серьезных клинических триалов. And the next, next great herb, which is available in this product, is Indian Echinacea, or uh, in Sanskrit it is Kalamega, which is, has also uh, a very pronounced immune modulating effect. Отдельно нужно отметить... Uh, голубой имбирь или альпинию галанга, которая эффективно показывает уменьшение инфильтрации лимфоцитов при uh, вирусных и вирусно-бактериальных пневмониях. And of course, uh, an additional herb uh, uh, as an ingredient of this product is blue ginger or kulanjan in India, uh, which is a very effective herb for reducing the infiltration of lymphocytes in the lung tissue. Ну и, конечно же, царица лекарственных растений, которые используются для лечения бронхолёгочных заболеваний, это солодка голая. And of course, the queen of all herbs used for the treatment of bronchopulmonary conditions is yashtimadhu or uh, the licorice где в исследованиях было достоверно верифицировано в двойных слепых рандомизированных триалах, что она достоверно уменьшает смертность от uh, острых респираторных вирусных инфекций. And the randomized control studies have proved that uh, the, um, li uh, the, the licorice really reduces the mortality from the viral diseases. Таким образом, мы разработали протокол для наших специалистов-холистиков, который позволяет оценивать риски и профилактировать uh, осложнения, которые могут возникать при встрече с коронавирусной инфекцией. So we have developed a protocol for uh, the specialists of our association, which really allows them to estimate the risks uh, of complications after any viral disease, including coronavirus, and make the treatment most effective. Я благодарю вас за внимание. Я желаю всем быть защищенными и помогать своими знаниями людям. И я уверен, что Аюрведа может дать человечеству очень много полезных советов для того, чтобы справиться с этой непростой ситуацией пандемии коронавируса. So, thank you so much for your attention. We really hope that you're staying safe out there. And uh, needless to say that Ayurveda has a very good and effective approaches which can uh, help battling this coronavirus pandemic all over the world. Спасибо. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Alex Sorokin. Uh, it was a pleasure to hear to your uh, views uh, about this. And it's, it's, of course, heartening for all of us here in India that uh, you are doing uh, so good uh, work in the field of Ayurveda. And we all feel uh, proud of that. Uh, now I would like to invite our uh, uh, second panelist, uh, Dr. P. Ram Manohar. Uh, Dr. Ram Manohar is the research director of Amrita School of Ayurveda in Kerala. He is, of course, a renowned Ayurveda physician and a teacher, and uh, he has been invited all over the world for lectures and courses on Ayurveda. He is also the member of the World Health Organization Expert Group for Standardization of Ayurveda Terminologies, and he is also the research advisor for Indian National Science Academy. So, of course, uh, he will share his wisdom with all of us. Uh, I invite uh, Dr. P. Ram Manohar. But before uh, Dr. Ram Manohar start, I also want uh, uh, to 
everyone to let know that uh, uh, we, uh, I also want to thank and admire uh, IUD Yoke team and uh, specifically Mr. Praveen Prabhakar for organizing this webinar on a short notice and of course getting more than 600 registrations worldwide. So I think uh, uh, we should thank uh, Ayur Yog team, uh, of course, uh, Rakesh Ji for sure as the chairman, but and Mr. Praveen Prabhakar for sure. So uh, I hand over to uh, Dr. Ram Manohar. Sorry, mute myself. I'm sorry. Uh, namaste. Uh, thank you, Nitinji, for the warm introduction. Uh, thanks also to Rakeshji and Praveenji for organizing this and inviting me. It's a great uh, pleasure uh, to be present in this webinar. But it's also quite disturbing to you know see the kind of crisis that we are facing worldwide. And I think it's a timely topic that we discuss about how, you know, with the help of Ayurveda, we can strengthen our immune systems. Let me get into the topic. Uh, you know, I was uh, intrigued when I read the chapter of Vimanas Thana in Charaka Samhita, in which there is this discussion on Janabadu Dhams or epidemics. It's a very profound dialogue between the student Agnivesha and his teacher Atreya. And Agnivesha is asking how these epidemics, uh, you know, affect humanity. And then what are the measures we, that we can take to, you know, face and overcome such ep epidemics? Of course, Atreya says that there are reasons why the same disease affects a large number of people, you know, because they are exposed to the four common factors of air, water, land, and time. And this we can interpret today in terms of the climate change that has happened, which has damaged our land, our water system, our atmosphere. And it is in this backdrop that you know, epidemics like COVID-19 manifest. But what's really very interesting is that in Charaka Samhita, Atreya tells Agnivesha that our best bet to face a big pandemic is to prepare our immune system even much before the disease begins to spread in society. This is extremely interesting. Uh, in Charaka Samhita, the immediate focus is not on looking at medicines, but, you know, in strengthening the immune system. And Charaka clearly says those who are succeeding in strengthening their immune system, they will be able to overcome the epidemics. And for that, of course, this is much before the epidemic, uh, you know, spreads and gets established. Ayurveda tells that we have to do Deha Shuddhi, we have to do Rasayana. Uh, this is very specifically indicated in Janavadu Dhamsa. And then this has to be supported by, you know, a profound uh, lifestyle process, which includes, you know, consideration of your mind, because this is a very important part during epidemics that people are going to be in severe mental stress. And we do not understand how mental stress can have a devastating effect on your immune system. And as the crisis, you know, uh, proceeds further and, and the duration of the epidemic increases, the toll on mental health will be even more serious. So, so Charaka advises a, a very balanced approach here, mental health, spiritual practices, diet, and also lifestyle. So before we get into the details, I would like to also look at, you know, how we understand the immunity today from a modern point of view. And what is it that Ayurveda has to offer here? It is a bit of a concern that we talk about immune boosting. Because in Ayurveda, what modern science understands as immunity is only part of the whole system of how we deal with diseases. Now, we cannot say what is described in Ayurveda as bala or rojas. There are many, many terms in Ayurveda. We will come to that. They cannot be just simply equated to immunity. In what in modern medicine is understood as a disease specific immunity is, you know, very specific. And in fact, according to modern medicine, boosting the immunity can sometimes be dangerous. Because in fact, in, in COVID like diseases at a certain stage, it is a boosted immune system that actually damages and creates all this crisis and death. 
what they call as an immune overdrive or you know leading to what is called as a cytokine storm so i prefer to use the word optimal functioning of the immune system not boosting the immune system because what we talk about as bala ojas agni vyadhi kshamatva vyadhi utpada pradibandhakatva these are all not so easily translatable in 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 modern terminology so this is what i will try to focus how to bring that more comprehensive approach of ayurveda in strengthening immunity so that we can withstand you know epidemic diseases like covid 19 in a more efficient way so when we talk about viruses let's come into very specific things you know according to even modern medicine there are at least three barriers that prevent the virus from coming inside so if you were to look at it from a virus point of view first of all we have the mechanical barriers our skin our epithelial cells this was already hinted by dr oleg sorokin you know the nasal oropharynx the nasopharynx these are the structures of the body which take part in the first defense against viruses and it's only if so strengthening even these external defenses is very important in dealing with viral infections and ayurveda has a lot of things to offer here and even the ayush ministry advice has hinted upon certain measures that we can use in ayurveda to strengthen this first barrier against viruses when we talk about immune system we are always focusing on some strong potent medicine and what ayurveda says is what really works is a balance of multiple factors dietary lifestyle mental each one of them count and they strengthen each other and that is how we can create a very strong barricade let us not depend on one strong medicine most of the time strong medicines can also produce many unwanted effects in the system so this is the beauty in uh, charaka samhita and in our classical text that they have worked out a very balanced approach in boosting your immunity it is when the first barrier fails and we have the innate immunity which is other way called as the humoral mediated immunity in which you know this is a very quick non specific response the body has the ability to identify any foreign invader that comes inside and if this system is alert enough there is a whole you know a chain of chemical events that happen release of cytokines the viruses are immediately recognized and then they are destroyed so this is the second way in which the body fights viral infections and only when this also fails then we have what is called as the adaptive immunity which is a cell mediated immunity this is what produces these antibodies so if your body has a strong immune system then we will be able to execute these processes right from the physical barrier to the second response and the third response and this can greatly reduce the virility of the disease and the severity of the disease so it's interesting when you look at how the classical ayurvedic texts and the modern you know medicine is looking at dealing with uh, this covid 19 both are emphasizing on immunity but the difference is in ayurveda emphasizes on developing immunity before the disease manifests whereas in modern medicine now after the epidemic has spread we are talking about herd immunity i mean herd immunity by infection for a disease like covid 19 can be devastate then we have Im- immunity through vaccination which is you know still uh, uh, far away we are not uh, reached that point the third way in which modern medicine is trying to improve immunity is through you know using plasma of patients who have already become sick they these are also only under experimental situations so this is where i want to point out that you know the ayurvedic approach of strengthening the body from within even before the disease manifests has a tremendous relevance today because we are going to have a long innings with the covid 19 uh, even with this lockdown and you know this uh, social distancing and all the measures these are only containment measures this slows down the spread of the virus it does not still eliminate it so one of the biggest things that we can do is to apply the principles of ayurveda and i must say that covid 19 has brought us to a lot of uh, difficult challenges but there's also positive side to it and that is the way we can overcome this the positive side is that this virus is forcing us to change our ways like never before change the way we live our lives change the way because i i know that as an ayurveda physician when we tell people that you have to change your lifestyle you have to change your diet people are not willing to do that but in the covid panic 
we see that now people everywhere are much more receptive willing to listen if you tell them that you should not you know keep awake at night you must follow a good lifestyle because it will strengthen your immunity now people are willing to listen to it so i think that we should think about this as not just an opportunity to fight covid 19 but to really come to a way of life that will help us to you know build a much more healthier and balanced way of living Uh, as it was mentioned before the comorbidities even when young people are being affected it is those people whose systems are compromised irrespective of age irrespective of all other factors they get affected by covid 19 now let us come back to ayurveda you know when it comes to the first level mechanical barrier i there are very very simple measures that we can do in fact in the ayush ministry advice there are uh, specific instructions given on how you can take care of your nasal passages and your oropharynx uh, this is very interesting because i read in many modern research uh, journals articles proposing that nasal irrigation with nasal i mean saline hypersaline hypertonic saline solution should be used to cleanse your nasal uh, passages so that your epithelial system is strong enough to fight the viruses this is also recommended to you know do what is called as an oropharyngeal wash but there are people who have even advised betadine to be used for this purpose you know this is where ayurveda has so many things to offer i was looking at a text called yoga ratnagara where specific yogas have been mentioned for oropharyngeal wash and nasal irrigation so this coming from simple measures you know like this to strengthen our physical barriers ayurveda also has a lot of advice on how to strengthen your immune system from within for example we say that mental health i was already mentioning mental health the kind of stress that covid 19 brings to the mind can have a devastating effect on your immune system we know the psycho neuroimmunology the pni axis which according to ayurveda is nothing but the mind vata pitta and kapha this is a new interpretation of vata pitta kapha model what they call as pni axis which is still only part of the story ayurveda always said it is sattva vata pitta and kapha pni vata standing for the i mean manas for the psycho neuro is vata uh, and uh, you know the endocrino is pitta and kapha is the immune system this is just a gross correlation but what is very important in ayurveda is that unless your doshas are sama and your mind can disturb your doshas it can disturb your agni system and then lead to this cascade of events that compromises your immunity now physical activity is also extremely important for moderate physical activity is enough there are enough studies that have shown that moderate physical activity is necessary to keep your recruit your immune system with the readiness to deal with viruses that your wbc the capacity of your body to produce antibodies at least half an hour of physical activity every day i tell you will make a big difference between a good and a compromised immune system similarly sleep if we don't realize that unless we have a robust I mean, if you really want to have a robust immune system we must have good sleep the good uh, the sleep especially affects the uh, uh, you know the efficiency of your adaptive immune system in fact not only for covid 19 there are studies which have shown that if you are sleep deprived you are more susceptible to cancer so that is the thing and then you know when we come to ayurveda we have many many uh, terminologies which describe immunity it's not possible to go into all those details uh, and we will be also running out of time now and in the next few minutes i will try to conclude but giving an overview of how ayurveda understands immunity in a total way because ayurveda says an immunity the immune system uh, functioning good functioning of the immune system is an outcome of you know mental and physical conditions of a certain balance in your mental and physical environment and unless you bring that mental and physical balance you cannot expect to have a good immune system this is the big difference in the way ayurveda and modern medicine looks at it in modern medicine we are trying to manipulate the immune system directly whereas in ayurveda we are trying to give a kind of uh, you know condition we are manipulating the conditions in which the body can build up a very strong immune system many people equate immunity to just ojas it is not true i want to also point out that 
what we see as the immune response to viruses is more related to Agni than just Bala and Rojas. So Agni is very, when we look at these concepts of Pajana, you know, the macrophage, phagocytic activity, all these things are more related to Agni. So the first and foremost thing, which when we look at lifestyle advice is also that we must give importance to Agni because it is Agni that is at the root of good nutrition. And it's extremely important that your nutrition, especially if you look at it from a modern point of view, adequate proteins, micronutrients like the vitamins and elements, these are all extremely important for the body to be able to produce the cells and the chemical components that are necessary uh, for the immune response to be activated. So when you look at it from Ayurveda, we have to look at all these elements uh, you know, in a balance, but it's beyond our webinar now to go into all those details. The last point I would like to say is that uh, there are certain herbs which the Ministry of Ayush has also already identified to immediately engage in clinical trials. So apart from this balanced approach of lifestyle, diet, you know, uh, and here when it comes to diet, there is a lot of confusion. What should be taken? What should not be taken? Some other day I found there was a debate on whether milk should be taken or not. Then you are so this is very much this is where i said the agni is the key thing this is where an ayurvedic physician will need to be consulted i mean we cannot really give a general guideline for everybody there are of course certain general dietary guidelines that can be given but it's very very important to make sure that you also pick up those specific items that will be more suitable for you to support your immune system and this can be done in consultation with an ayurvedic physician so when it comes to the herbs, some of the herbs mentioned by Dr. Olega have also already been taken by the Ministry of Ayush for you know, very serious uh, research. One of which is Ashwagandha. Ashwagandha was not mentioned, but Ashwagandha has been, because there are some docking studies, you know, in silico studies, which have shown that Ashwagandha could elicit those specific kind of immune responses that would be helpful against, uh, you know, in fighting against COVID-19. Of course, Yeshti Madhu is also I want to say, which was, uh, you know, highly recommended by Dr. Oleg. This is being taken by the Ministry of Ayush for further studies. And then Guduchi. Guduchi is also a very good immunomodulating agent, which can be used in mild to severe, uh, you know, cases of uh, COVID-19 because it is having a dual function. It is not only an immunomodulating agent, but it is also having abilities to deal with the typical presentations of COVID-19, like, you know, fever and uh, Sanipada type of fever, protecting the blood from becoming disturbed. We are hearing that, you know, blood clots forming in different organs. This is becoming a, a big problem in COVID cases that become severe. And then with the addition of Tipali and Guduchi, you know, we have a very good kind of uh, uh, preventive formulation, which can be extended even to mild and moderate stages. So this is in brief an overview I would like to give about how from an Ayurvedic point of view can, we can develop a perspective of, of immunity to deal with the COVID-19. Thank you very much for this opportunity. And I wish that we will all join hands together. COVID-19 has shown that as humanity, we are one species and we are all vulnerable to one, the single problem. So this is a time that we can realize the need to unite ourselves against a common enemy and build a new chapter and a new you know, life for humanity in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Dr. Ram Manohar, for your wonderful presentation. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what uh, both our panelists have mentioned about some prominent herbs, I think uh, people uh, should take those herbs regularly. I can see a lot of questions about what should be taken for children, for elderly people. I think uh, this is the answer. But however, what all our panelists will say in the end, I will make a, a concrete plea on that as well so that it's easy for us to what we call a take home takeaway so that uh, even even the common families can use the benefits of these herbs. Uh, uh, also, uh, just uh, to inform, I see uh, some of our participants are very active uh, in sending their suggestions. I cannot read everybody's suggestion, but 
I got one from Dr. Meenal Laj from Pune mentioning about suggesting the use of Kulanjan uh, as a sheer park, uh, like we do with the Haldi Dood or turmeric um, uh, latte, you know. So some of these very good suggestions. I see people uh, from Singapore as well from US and Colombia. So Praveen Prabhakar ji, it's a good thing that we chose this time at 4, 4 or 5 p.m. because people all over the world in different time zones are able to participate in this program. It's 6.37 in the morning in America right now. So it's, it's good we chose this time. <laughs> now I invite, uh, I would like to invite my third uh, panelist, um, Dr. Matt Robbie Schlund. Uh, Dr. Schlund, uh, of course, he is a very special personality in, in ways because he is not only a medical doctor, also practicing Ayurveda for several years in his uh, private clinic in Gera in the uh, eastern part of Germany. And uh, now also he is a politician. He is the member of German parliament, Bundestag. So I of course believe he must be busy not only helping his patients, but also I think defining the policies of the government of Germany. Uh, we all know that yes, Germany is badly hit, but the good news that comes from Germany is that, that the, num the death rate is very low and also the recovery rate is very high. That's what the data we get from Germany. So I would like to invite Dr. Robbie Schlund to speak uh, about uh, his experiences about Ayurveda and of course his own experiences, both as a doctor and as a politician. So thank you, Dr. Robbie Schlund, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, um, Dr. Akawa, uh, for invitation. Sorry for my English. Uh, I had not so much time to make a big presentation because we are a lot of work in the politician now because the COVID uh, infection is not so easy to manage. You know these problems. And I have also a lot of patients they would like uh, to use uh, alternative medicine, not like only uh, the presentation with the government system. And that's why it's a lot of work. Sorry for that and thank you very much. And uh, I'm very happy that I can uh, make some um, points, and can make uh, some uh, ideas uh, to show you. Thank you very much. Uh, sorry that I have not so much time because the next appointment is for me with the Helmholtz Society. This is a, a scientific society and we have the next uh, video conference. Um, for me, it's very interesting, the discussion with the doctors. And now I make a little bit statement and maybe in the next webinar, I would like to stay and then we can discuss some questions. I hope that this uh, in agree with your um, 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 <clears throat> um, agree with your mention. Um, the politician world, I would like to introduce a little bit myself because I uh, work in the health committee. We have a lot of uh, uh, sittings uh, there and uh, in, also in the foreign affairs um, uh, committee and also in the global health committee. And you know, that is really not so easy in this time. Now, what is, <coughs> sorry, what is uh, for me, uh, and what is for in our politics? <clears throat> Sorry, <clears throat> that's not Corona. Of course. I'm now very healthy, then I would like to say what I help me, and then I make a little bit uh, a cough, and that's not a good idea. What I can say? Uh, what is, uh, for, uh, in my opinion, the work now in the politician with Ayurveda? This is very interesting because uh, in my opinion and on my um, brain, I think about uh, a three body layer now in the management of Corona. And we have the state layer. This is this, what we make in the politician. And the second is the risk group in our uh, society. And we have your own body. And uh, this works together. And uh, I would not like to say about uh, how Ayurveda works, that you know it at all, and I'm uh, not so a big Ayurvedic doctor. Uh, I think that we can, um, we can use Ayurveda very helpful for uh, the po politics uh, in the management of uh, Corona. And um, 
my idea is that we have uh, that we um, that we uh, uh, save the the, the body uh, of your own of, with all people in your body that we save the risk group and that we save uh, the state and uh, the very important fact is uh, that uh, the human uh, immune system works with um, with uh, relaxation st status and uh, in the most of the countries we can see in the politician they make a lot of stress for the people and they make uh, they say it's all oh, it's crazy it's crazy it's crazy i think it's not a good idea the people are not uh, um, 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 they can understand what you say that we have a crisis with a new infection or we can make this step this step and this step and uh, i think that's a good management in Germany, it was not all so bad. I'm from the opposition, and that's why that we have to say this was not okay and this was not okay. Uh, we think okay was that um, uh, we not so uh, so uh, make so a quick uh, shutdown, and that we are um, that we um, uh, surf uh, of the the virus wave. If I can say this with this. Uh, um, with these words and uh, that uh, makes uh, our uh, curve you can see it in the hopkins university curve that is uh, not so bad and uh, we have said all the time that uh, we can say to people what they can do what is helpful and that not we say it's all not allowed and maybe this management is not so bad and the second is that we can say the risk group uh, that we help them that we uh, speak about the uh, uh, um, a good uh, common um, uh, helps with the poor people and the people they are not uh, that are very elderly people and uh, that's also a very uh, very good fact uh, you can organize um, these problems and the most of them uh, the, the best are the the, uh, the very uh, important uh, uh, fact is that our body and the body uh, is your own and you can uh, can also um, help that he uh, not have stress they in a, a, a calm mensch uh, calm situation and uh, I have a little brochure for my patient and inside some information and that uh, we have a five-step program and maybe not all can help uh, against the infection uh, that helps that they have no stress stress and no stress and uh, no bro uh, not so much problems with the brain then you have uh, no armor no brain armor and uh, then your human system uh, works good uh, you know it from the sports medicine uh, and sports is very good uh, uh, in the in the in the um, um, in a prof professional sports, they have a lot of problems with the human system. This is the stress for the body. And uh, we have five steps. And one step is that we use uh, Ayurvedic uh, products. Uh, the most of them from my good friend Nitin. <laughs> uh, the Bris products, Immunoplis, Alia Flugard, Bliss Defense, and also Trifala. And uh, sometimes from uh, Bliss uh, Ayurveda and the other from MA, 50. 505 and we also use for the patient nausea and um, uh, and some propolis cream for the nose and the second is to drink a lot of um, uh, water especially uh, also hot water why um, we know that um, a problem with the people are not drink that they have uh, in the blood system a lot of um, uh, compre a problem with the blood system the blood is uh, not so not so liquid and uh, a lot of corona patients have problems with uh, lungs embolia and uh, that's why a very big fact that you drink uh, water and you drink a lot in this time and the third uh, point is make sport uh, not the prof professional sport a sport for uh, the whole body and the best way is yoga and a little bit uh, uh, jogging and uh, you know, some uh, gymnastics uh, programs <clears throat> and the four steps is 
relaxation and calm and <coughs> sorry <coughs> and the fifth is oxygen therapy with a special uh, device yes and uh, and last but not least i should say the children uh, maybe you will have uh, heard uh, of this that the children uh, uh, to 10 years uh, not have infection or not so much infection in a big uh, study of uh, Island uh, you have uh, no one child is in infection why uh, the, the normal the normally uh, school medicine cannot say this because why why uh, it's for Ayurvedic doctor very easy you can say the children have a lot of Ultras, and that's for me the last sentence. It's very necessary that we improve ultras in whole the bodies, and then the whole state in the society will be healthy, and then will be decrease uh, the creases um, closed, and then we can start our normal life. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rabish Lund, uh, for your insight and for sharing uh, your experiences. Uh, uh, thank you, all our three panelists. Before I start uh, uh, my own uh, presentation, uh, we will take 10 more minutes before we finish uh, this webinar. Uh, yes, uh, as we all uh, hear that all the three panelists emphasizes on three major things. Uh, and I think uh, it's good to remember that. One is to uh, reduce ama or toxins from our body. And how we get rid of that is to detox our body uh, with herbs, with warm water, and of course, with healthy lifestyle. The second important thing all our panelists said, which is a very important principle of Ayurveda is to maintain our agni. Agni means digestive ability, which means body's ability to digest the food in a healthy way so that our body do not produce more toxins or more ama in the body. And that is how we strengthen our immune system as well as strengthen our body. As our panelists mentioned that in Ayurveda, and I also said that, that in Ayurveda, Immunity is not just uh, enhancing uh, your lymphatic cells to fight a pathogen. Immunity is about strengthening our body to fight weakness and disease both. Because if our body is weak, if the tissues are weak, then it will not be easy for us to fight back such deadly pathogens. And the third important aspect our panelists say is to manage our stress levels. This is a very important aspect of Ayurveda that because of this environment or because of our lifestyle, if we are too much stress, then also it will disturb our body's ability to fight back viruses, especially uh, uh, our immune system gets weakened. So for that, we should definitely do yoga, we should do a pranayam, uh, which is called breathing exercises, uh, which are good for our lungs as well. And we should, of course, do meditation. Whichever form of meditation you have learned, uh, please do that because all these things uh, are very helpful. And in the lockdown period, I think we have sufficient time to do these things. Of course, uh, whatever is available uh, at home, we cannot do a lot of sports, but we can do some exercises. We can, of course, do yoga and meditation at home to balance the stress. And now we come to the Ayurveda herbs. Uh, you know, there is a phrase in, uh, in the Vedic tradition. We bless our younger ones or our loved ones. We call them Ojasvi Bhava, which means be full of Ojas. Ojas is a determination or sign of a perfect immunity of our body. It brings glow on the face. So that is why it's a tradition in India to say, uh, to bless people with full health, which means Ojasvi Bhava. And that is very important in these times of COVID-19 when we are all uh, affected by it, that we enhance our immunity and fight with this virus head on. We, it's good to write uh, and to know about some of the prominent herbs as mentioned uh, by our panelists. 
and I would like to uh, repeat that. Yes, uh, uh, Tinospora cordifolia or Guruchi or Giloe is one of the most prominent herbs used in Ayurveda uh, to, for our immune system. And also the herbal decoction, I think it's available in homes, it's easily available. We should do that regularly. Ashwagandha, Vithania somnifera is another prominent herb that can be uh, used uh, by all of us. Uh, to enhance our immune system as well as to strengthen our body because ashwagandha also is palya herb which also enhances the strength of our body to fight back diseases. A third very common herb available everywhere and I would say uh, in different forms of Ayurveda supplements is present in, uh, in Europe, in Russia, in America as well is amlaki, amla, uh, what we called Ambilica officinalis or Phylanthus ambilica. There are several names to this wonderful herb, which is one of the richest source of vitamin C. And that is why it's very effective uh, to in our use. Uh, we can use any form. We can have it in candy form. We can use it in, uh, in paste form like Chavanprash or Ojas Pushti and things like that. We can take it in tablet form. We can take it in trifla. Uh, a lot of people take trifla every day. So also it helps to detox our body. So many, um, in many forms, amlaki can be used because in classical Ayurveda, it is also, that is why called dhatri, which means nourishing and protecting like a mother. And the reason uh, amlaki is said because it is a very uh, immunomodulating and protecting herb for us. Yes, other herbs uh, uh, that are mentioned uh, in Ayurvedic text, as uh, our panelist mentioned, is Endographis paniculata. Endographis paniculata is also used in traditional Chinese system of medicine, as well as Ayurveda. And it's available worldwide in different supplements, even herbal teas available. So I think uh, uh, it is called Kalmeg uh, in, uh, in Sanskrit or in Hindi. And uh, so I think this is a very commonly uh, can be used uh, as a herbal decoction and both in tablet form. Uh, another herb that commonly can be used is uh, Kulanjan, Alpinia Gelenga, which is again uh, very good even in flu-like conditions, in flu-like symptoms. If we have cough, if we have cold, it's very good for us. Uh, yes, uh, licorice, uh, which we call Yeshti Madhu or Muleti, is also very effective, especially good effect on our throat. A very common, uh, a very common herb, uh, ginger. Uh, you know, it's adrak, what we call it. I think every household has this thing in India as well as outside of India. And it has antihistaminic properties, good for cough, flu, cold and viral infections. And one should take, uh, people drink hot water, it's a, a standard recommendation by all our panelists as well as by Ayush. I think we should all use ginger uh, and uh, black pepper in hot water. We should make like a, uh, like a herbal tea to drink it every day because that has a lot of uh, research uh, also. If you go on Google or PubMed, you will see a lot of research on ginger about its effects not only on our immune system, but, but also on our bron bronchial uh, inflammations, if there is a possibility of cough, or if we, if we are hit by the virus. Clove, long, what we call Shizygium aromaticum. It's again a very household spice in almost all Indian homes, and now also very freely av available in America and Europe. It's uh, also, it has antibacterial, antiviral properties, and should be used uh, again as part of our food. We can use in soup, we can put it in rice cooking, in vegetable cooking, or any type of soup that we make. We should use clove, long, shazigium aromaticum as one of the ingredients because of its antiviral and antibacterial effect. Another herb which is considered very effective uh, especially to strengthen the capacity of our lungs is Vasa, Edentoda Vasika, which is again available in several formulations in Ayurveda and especially in Europe in syrup recipe bliss 
or of course uh, in lot of uh, lot of formulations of classical preparations of ayurveda vasa can be used uh, also both as prophylaxis as well as as a treatment module also if we have a cough if we have dry cough allergic cough or any type of uh, these things uh, of course as i mentioned i just wanted to share with you a recipe in the end of a immuno boost uh, immuno modulating or immunity boosting herbal tea recipe if uh, uh, people who are listening to us would like to write it down they can also write it down it's like you boil two cups of water you boil that water and put few pieces of fresh ginger in that and then a pinch of cumin seeds jeera jeera seeds sabut jeera cumin seeds a pinch of fennel seeds sof sabut sof two buds of clove long shazigium aromaticum this and two pepperonis ya do dane hote hain black pepper two pepperonis of black pepper kali mirch ke dane if we crush all these ingredients and put it in two cups of boiled water and boil it for 4 to 5 minutes we get an infusion we sieve it and if we want we can use some honey or even uh, some cinnamon jisko uh, hum dalchini bolte hain we can use some of these things and drink it every day for the whole family i see lot of questions asked about what we should give to elderly people what we should give to children i think these we should give to our children these we should give to our elderly people and to ourselves to enhance our immune system you don't need a a doctor's prescription also for these things these are very very basic things available in our kitchen which we should make and use and get the benefit out of it and of course last but least balance stress levels brahmi bacopa monieri is one of the most important herb uh, to for our peace of mind it is very important that we don't uh, uh, we don't uh, stress ourselves we don't uh, uh, ex feel anxiety or fear or phobia because that will weak our immune system and in the unfortunate situation of us getting infected with covid virus it will even make us more problems for us so it is very important to do uh, all these stressing methods like yoga pranayam meditation what we call dhyan uh, physical exercises and especially pranayam all the breathing techniques that we know to enhance the capacity of our lungs improve the circulation of the blood and helps body to fight the infections and of course we stay calm happy and healthy that means emotionally also we should feel happy otherwise uh, lockdowns can also bring a lot of depression to people and i think that's also not a good idea to feel depressed or sad about it it's a situation the whole world is facing we have to fight back and i think with the, all our uh, suggestions that our panelists gave i think ayurveda can show the path to all of us uh, uh, to get rid of this uh, dreadful uh, disease uh, in a healthier in a healthier manner uh, i again thank uh, ayur yoga for organizing this uh, wonderful uh, international seminar i thank all the participants from all over the world uh, to listen to the uh, presentations very carefully i thank uh, our panelist dr alex sorokin uh, dr p ram manohar dr robi shlund and of course the organizers uh, uh, rakesh kumar ji pravin prabhakar ji and the whole team of ayur yoga uh, for sharing this knowledge and i believe uh, that we can do something like that once in a week or whatever uh, comfortably possible Uh, uh to continue that so thank you so much uh, for being part of uh, this whole panel uh, and i get a message from ayur yog that uh, all the uh, queries the question and answers that are being uh, put forward uh, i think uh, uh, they will be forwarded to panelists because i see there are questions asked in dr ram manohar's name dr alex name so i think uh, i request ayur yog to forward the emails to uh, to the panelist 
and in one or two days i think all the panelists will reply back to your queries and uh, uh, hand it back uh, to the uh, to the relevant people i think uh, that will be very helpful when people are asking questions so yes sir. Uh, anything else uh, uh, rakeshi you want to say before we end the uh, in the oh, just uh, thank you very much nitin ji very well elaborated in fact you have moderated it so well that uh, everything was concluded uh, uh, everything is clear there are some question that will be answered in due course even presentation will also be shared with the participants so thank you very much again uh, thanks for being with us today thanks to all the panelists and parveen prabhakar for doing a great job in a short time thanks parveen thank you sir Thank, thank you, you thank you so much uh, everyone um, and praveen ji if you want to give any information you can give now or whenever you want to give it later you can do that praveen ji for the next seminar please give the information right now uh, thanks nitin sir and all panelists i have few points for our yoga expo world assembly on ayurveda yoga and naturopathy in ayurveda 2020 we will do international seminar and exhibition for ayurveda and also we will plan investor summit ravi sir we will also in touch with embassies and mea for european union summit brics summit sarc summit bimstek or asean uh, andre i will like to bring this to your notice that this time we are planning to do pulse analysis of the delegates and visitors this is interesting thing for you and doing international ayurveda contest for the students i hope this is also interesting for you thanks all so thank you so much we close our session and uh, thank you all the panelists uh, my personal thanks also to all of you uh, to be part uh, and to be be part and we hope next time uh, we get uh, uh, wisdom from uh, from you as well as from other uh, uh, leading practitioners of ayurveda from all over india and world over thank you so much Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much. Namaste. 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 <laughs>